Hello beautiful people. <laughs> Hello beautiful people. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Gianna Malucci. I am so glad you decided to join me today. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about Saturn throughout the signs. Saturn astrologically represents the archetype of the father in our chart. It also represents where we need to build substantial substantiality in our self and in our life. So where we want to make things more substantial. It's also where we can feel a sense of lack and where we put in the work to manifest. Saturn is also about manifestation. It's about physical form and so many other things that we'll dive into in this video. If you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome. You are so welcome here. I post astrological content and in doing so, my intent is to support you in learning and knowing who you are with more clarity and completeness. Also, I post fun content like celebrity birth chart readings, so that's something fun. And you can learn about yourself through those as well by uh, understanding some of the energies present in celebrities' charts that may be present in yours. Now, there is only one rule if you decide to be here and watch these videos. <laughs> uh, that is if you're super hot and you love astrology, you do have to like this video and subscribe. Once again, I do post many wonderful videos and I would love to share them with you. So please like and subscribe. I also do personal chart readings. So if you would like a reading from me, please reach out through the email I have in the description below. It is gianastrology at gmail.com. I am happy to talk to you guys if you have any questions about readings, about rates, about whatever, feel free to shoot me an email. I do not bite. Alrighty, without further ado, let's hop into this video. All right, first off, I'm going to give a general overview about the energy of Saturn and what Saturn represents in our charts. So Saturn is the Lord of Time and of Karma. So with Saturn present in our chart, it represents our relationship with time, our relationship with karma, where karma manifests in our life, and where we put in the time and effort in order to make ourselves more substantial. Saturn is about endurance and uh, attachment to form as well. It likes to keep things the same. So it's where we find an enduring quality to what we create and who we are. It's also about substantiality and integrity. So with what we create, is it aligned and does it have enough integrity to stand the test of time? Have we substantiated it enough and done the work to accumulate wisdom where we know what we create will stand the test of time because it is based on something ancient um, or based on things that are ancient and that uh, the principles of do withstand the test of time. Hope that makes sense. Saturn also represents the archetype of the father. And the father tells us who we are in the world, who we are when we're not at home, what impact we have on society. And Saturn also rules the 10th house, which has to do with our career and life path, who we are outside of our home, our branding, our public image. So connecting with Saturn energy is connecting with father energy and connecting with who we were told we are in the world. Also, Saturn has to do with where we feel a sense of lack and not being enough. It's our vulnerabilities and kind of our, it can be like an Achilles heel, it can be our weaknesses. However, it's in accepting those weaknesses that we create more strength and create more sustainability and substantiality. It's kind of like Chiron in that way where it's our, um, Chiron represents our deepest wounds, but it also can be our deepest healing. Saturn is our most intense vulnerabilities and weaknesses. However, when we bring awareness to those weaknesses, they can become our greatest strengths. It is the work we put into and the mountains we climb in order to make ourselves enough and more substantial. We are always enough. We are always substantial enough as well. It's bringing awareness to this so that we don't attach ourselves to these mental forms that tell us that we are weak and not enough. Instead, we start to peel back the layers and recognize the gold that runs deep within the uh, ore of our mountainous self. 
Yeah. I have a dream, a song to sing. I just watched Mamma Mia, so that song is on my mind. All right, without further ado, let's hop into the energy of Saturn throughout the signs. First up, we'll talk about Saturn and Aries. Saturn is considered in its fall in Aries. So that basically means that Saturn is not very comfy in Aries. Planets have certain exaltations, domiciles, where they feel either like empowered, disempowered, at home, or not at home in. Uh, when a planet is in its fall, like Saturn is in Aries, it feels disempowered in that sign. There's a sense of conflict and of a shadow aspect of that planet being brought out or and or that sign being brought out. Because Aries is ruled by Mars, which is very much about gumption and going, uh, and Saturn rules Capricorn. However, Saturn is about slow, steady progress. It's about caution. It's more of the brake, while the brake pedal, while Mars and Aries is more of the gas pedal. So when you have Saturn and Aries, there's a need to find balance between that gas pedal and that brake. There may be a tendency towards burnout because there's a lack of understanding of how to build endurance and how to pace ourselves when you have Saturn in Aries. So you're learning to lead and go, go, um, penetrate, go, that's very Aries, in a way that is enduring and substantial so that your go isn't petered out and doesn't burn out. The spark can catch and blaze. Uh, Aries is the initial spark of life and so it's learning to cultivate that spark so it's not just a flash in the pan, but it's something that continues on and burns on. With Saturn and Aries, you may have been burdened by a rather militant father. He may have been a very like archetypically masculine figure who is a leader, who had a lot of gumption and go. And so you might feel like you don't always measure up to it or you're not enough. You don't have enough fire in you. So it's learning to, again, find that balance between the gas and the brake, learning when to take charge and forge forward and also when to have more caution and more boundary and go back. It's, it's that learning. It's almost like you're learning to drive a stick shift. So it's like, when do you, uh, I haven't driven a stick shift, but this is the image that I get. So it's like you're learning how to use the different pedals so that you can go sustainably without stopping and starting. Uh, that is the major, major challenge. This placement is also a very entrepreneurial placement. So you have the ability to start your own ventures. And also there is an ability within you to have the endurance to put it all the way through. Again, you have that initial spark. It's just learning how to let it blaze and continue to nurture it so that it can continue to be on fire. It's like an eternal candle. You have the ability to set that spark and that candle will burn forever. You're just learning how to protect it and um, create the proper boundaries. Saturn is about boundaries to allow it to be safe from the wind and whatever other elements. You create substantiality by forging your own path and allowing yourself the space to do new things and go a new way that perhaps others before you haven't. And your father might actually be a shining example of someone who has forged their own path, or maybe they didn't get the opportunity to, so you are holding that mantle or taking up that mantle to forge your own path. And that's something that, uh, you might get a little bit of resistance from your father or your family or male figures in your life for doing, ultimately it'll lead to your success because you are taking up the mantle of your ancestors. Just letting go of the shame and realizing you're doing it for not only yourself, but for all of them as well. That'll create more peace uh, and less shame and blockage. Yay, okay. Moving on to Saturn and Taurus. So when you have Saturn and Taurus, there's an indication that you'll feel a sense of lack or not enoughness materially, or in terms of feeling safe and secure in your body. Taurus has to do with our material being, our body, and it is also about substantiality and a sense of security within physical form. So Saturn and Taurus amplifies those uh, energies of feeling safe in our body, feeling like 
the physical form we take can sustain us. Saturn in Taurus can also bring about a sense of lacking value or lacking personal value. And it showcases how we might feel like there's not enough resources for us as well. Taurus rules the second house of personal resources and we might feel like we don't have enough food or we don't have enough time. There's a sense of lack that comes from Saturn and Taurus that is up for the native to substantiate themselves and uh, make peace with. Saturn and Taurus also brings up relational and art focus. Uh, Taurus is ruled by Venus, which is also the ruler of Libra. And with Venus ruling Taurus, there's a focus on the relationship of form. There is a way of looking at beauty that it is the right relationship between forms that opens our eyes to beauty that's already present. So art and creation, it's just about almost like calibrating the looking glass that allows us to see the beauty that's already there. So with Saturn and Taurus, we bring about this sense of right relationship with form and substantiating right relationship with form so we can see the beauty and abundance that's always there. It's just that recalibration of our perspective. Saturn and Taurus can also be the starving artist archetype or the father that tells you you're gonna be a starving artist uh, because they didn't follow their creative ambitions, their artistic ambitions, and so you're taking up the mantle of those artistic ambitions. Because Taurus is a very touchy-feely, sensual sign, Saturn and Taurus can indicate sometimes a father that lacked that kind of physical touch um, way of showing affection and love. Uh, it can be limited in the father. They may have that desire to, you know, initiate that to, you know, hold their children and kiss them on the forehead, etc. However, Saturn has that limiting aspect. It's almost like a kernel that's dried up. There's still so much potential and there's that seed there. It just takes the work and, you know, digging through the earth and planting that seed um, so it can grow into a big oak, <laughs> you know? Yeah, so there is that potential that your father may not have been very physically affectionate. So it can lead to an imbalance in the sensual nature and um, maybe really being touch starved so you can branch into more intense sensual behavior rather than a balanced kind of not only sensuality but physical affection. Um, yeah, but learning to balance that nature within you creates not only a healthier physical affection, um, sexually and non-sexually, but it also creates a better safety in your body and you can feel more love for your body. So you're substantiating with uh, Saturn and Taurus your relationship with material form. You're substantiating your feelings of safety and security within your body and substantiating your own personal resources, re-establishing and creating a new perspective with your relationship with form so you can recalibrate that looking glass and see the abundance and prosperity that is always present. How do you do that? By reminding yourself and bringing gratitude to what you have, by connecting with things that are beauty that make you see beauty in the world um, easily and increasing that and being able to see beauty in the world by again, shifting that perspective. And as you do that, as you tell yourself you're safe in your body, as you connect with your root and open yourself up more so to that root chakra and to that sacral chakra and release whatever guilt or shame you may have felt for not having enough growing up or not having enough in your foundational some foundational aspect of your life, you'll begin to release that emotion and draw in happiness and a sense of prosperity instead to replace it. I have a dream. All right, moving on to Saturn in Gemini. With Saturn in Gemini, your karma is learning to substantiate your mind and your ability to communicate and speak. You may have had a father that was incredibly intelligent or and or a genius. 
However, they didn't have the nourishment required for them to manifest that and to really bloom into that intelligence. So again, with Saturn, it's like you're taking up the mantle of your father. So you're taking up the mantle of manifesting that sense of genius and that sense of eloquence and communication. You might have felt stupid growing up or when you spoke, you might have felt stupid. It's learning to open up your ability to communicate, opening up your thinking so that you can clearly communicate your thoughts and recognizing and putting in work to make your mind and your voice more substantial. This is also a placement that can sometimes indicate speech impediments and also perhaps learning disabilities. However, there is a capacity to overcome them and make peace with them and elevate not only socially and intellectually, but also in the form of how we communicate and how we speak. Saturn and Gemini, like Saturn and Sag people, might also have a tendency to say the wrong thing, and this can be really costly for them. So they're working a lot on social and communicative proficiency, and that's part of what they're making more substantial in their life. All right, moving on to Saturn in Cancer. So when you have Saturn in Cancer, Saturn is considered in its detriment in Cancer. So it feels uncomfy, it's not at home in that sign, so there's a sense of conflict and difficulty there. Saturn in Cancer indicates that part of your karma is creating a substantial and substantiated sense of home and family. There's oftentimes karma around nurturance and vulnerability. It can indicate a father that perhaps wasn't very forthcoming with their emotions, but felt a great deal of emotions. So there's like a plugging up of the emotions. And when we plug up our emotions, that can lead to moodiness, it can lead to depression and a lack of expression as well. So there's not a great deal of emotional fluidity or fluency in the family. With Saturn in Cancer, it can also indicate that we meet this karma and make peace with it through becoming and integrating an emotionally fluent father within ourselves, regardless of our gender. So it's an ability to substantiate our emotional intelligence, our emotional expression, and our ability to hold space and take care of our emotions that sense of nurturance and vulnerability becomes substantiated. So it's almost paradoxical in that Saturn nature because it's like our vulnerabilities and weaknesses. However, again, it's finding strength in those vulnerabilities and weaknesses. And as a result, we're able to transmute them and create more solidity and substantiality through it. It's doing the emotional work that our father perhaps wasn't able to do or didn't have the integrity to do. We're creating more emotional integrity, and as a result, we create more integrity at home. This is also a placement that says you might be able to, you might manifest a home for your family that gets passed down through generations, and you might create the sense of family and home that is so enduring and substantial and integrated. There's integrity to the type of family that you create, that that karma and that system of family is passed down through generations. Moving on to Saturn in Leo. So Saturn is also in its detriment in Leo because Saturn along with Uranus co-rule Aquarius and Leo is opposite to Aquarius. So the Saturn again in detriment is really uncomfy. So Saturn is pretty uncomfy in Leo. With Saturn in Leo, there is karma around creative expression and limits around creative expression. Leo is very much about pride and shame in our chart. It is the pride of being royal and the shame of being a peasant. So it's learning to balance and hold space for pride and shame, as well as to create uh, substantial pieces and make our work and our creative endeavors substantial. It could be the placement of someone whose father had a lot of creative ambition, however, they didn't have the support or the kind of, again, that sense of nourishment necessary for them to really fully express themselves creatively. As a result, they could have followed a much more traditional career path and they didn't take on um, their dreams and creative aspirations, artistic aspirations. 
So again, it's up to the person with this Saturn and Leo to really go forth and try to make their creative and artistic endeavors a career, try to make it a sustainable, substantial path, um, taking up that mantle of their father. And this can also be the father that says, what are you doing? Why are you pursuing art? You're gonna be a starving artist and learning how to say, no, I can try this, I can do this. Saturn and Leo can also be very much about being seen for who you are, and the father not necessarily seeing you or noticing you for who you are. It's also solidifying your sense of self and making substantial your sense of self. When we see who we are and we are unashamed of it, when we have done the work to substantiate a relationship with pride and shame, taking care of them without them really running the show, that's when we step into the royal essence of who we are, and that's when we can start creating works and creating careers that are substantiated and express who we are in our life path without falling apart or burning out. A lot of Saturn and fire sign energy is sustaining that flame. And with Leo, it's sustaining our creative effort, sustaining our ability to be in the public eye, substantiating it and balancing it with that time where um, we can recoup and connect with ourselves internally. Moving on to Saturn and Virgo. So when you have Saturn and Virgo, the energy is learning how to digest and integrate experiences and information. It's making substantial what we go through and uh, how you say, separating the wheat and the chaff. That's what Virgo is about. Taking in the wisdom, which is that wheat, that nourishing aspect, and being able to put the chaff um, back into the earth so it can be digested by the earth. Um, not taking in that which is unnecessary for us, which is the chaff in this case. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, so um, integrating wisdom and finding wisdom in tough situations, creating a sense of nourishment and fertility from soil that might at first glance appear barren, experiences that we might feel are a waste of time and a waste of energy. However, we learn to be very uh, thrifty with the experiences and time that we spend on this earth so that we can draw meaning from even experiences that we feel were either painful or, like I said, a waste. So with Saturn and Virgo, there might be a feeling or a sense that things aren't perfect enough in this world. And part of our karma and our lesson with Saturn and Virgo is substantiating our relationship with form and the right balance of form so that we can nourish our souls and recognize the divine intelligence within form. When we are able to recalibrate the microscope, so to speak, that's the way we can see the perfection that is omnipresent in our world and in form always. It's just learning how to recalibrate it and balance the microscope so we can see it, what is already there. Saturn and Virgo can be really hypercritical. They may have a father that's really hypercritical and thus they don't always feel supported and might be hypersensitive to criticism. They may also get hung up on details because of that hypercritical nature. However, again, when there is that change in perspective and they're able to see perfection within imperfection and kind of rebalancing the imperfections of our world to find the lens through which perfection and beauty shine through, that's when they find more peace and substantiality and balance. Virgo in an esoteric sense is the pregnant human giving birth to the soul. So it's the idea that the soul is encased in form and in creating proper relationship with form, proper nourishment, we're able to create ideal conditions through which that soul can be given birth to. So we're substantiating our own sense of form and our own sense of nourishment. That is our karma so that we can have right relation with form. Thus, we see divinity, we see the soul with more clarity and it allows it to come through us. All right, moving on to Saturn in Libra. 
So Saturn is exalted in Libra. That basically means that it's in its power there. It's almost like it's sitting in a throne. So it feels like it magnifies its authority. It magnifies the positive influence of Saturn and more of the uh, beneficial aspects of the Saturnian archetype. So with Libra, there's always a relational focus and Saturn in Libra, it calls us to build our substantiality individually so that we can be in relationship more substantially. It's the idea of keeping our side of the street clean, like that uh, <laughs> song by Taylor Swift, Karma, I keep my side of the street clean. When you keep your side of the street clean, you can enter relationships with more integrity, you can be more substantial in them, and as a result, you create cleaner and more enduring relationships. Saturn and Libra can also indicate that you connect with really socially elevated people, people that hold a lot of authority, a lot of power and influence. And you might feel like bound to these people until you recognize your own sense of authority and start to integrate your own sense of substantiality. That way you are a person that other people connect with that these other people see as being very authoritative, being very powerful and socially affluent. Yeah, so recognizing that whatever you see in other people, you hold that within yourself and it's just creating greater relationship with that in yourself so that you almost like retrieve that part of your soul and integrate it. There's also this uh, energy of creating authority around our sense of beauty and value. Libra is ruled by Venus, which represents beauty in our chart. It represents how we value ourselves and how we value others and other things. So when we're able to hold authority to our own beauty, our own sense of value, rather than allowing other people to dictate how valuable we are or how beautiful we are or how our beauty is uh, monetized or valued more generally, um, when we hold that, that power, it allows us to create a substantiality around our beauty so that we're not feeling like we're not enough, like we're not valuable enough, kind of like Saturn and Taurus, making sure that we value ourselves. Um, yeah, that gives us a sense of being enough and of being substantiated. Also, Saturn and Libra indicates that we can create relationships that really stand the test of time. It's about learning to create boundaries in relationships as well, so that when we again are entering into relationships we have a solid sense of self and we create with people um, recognizing our own value our own authority uh, regardless of the people we connect with and then we're able to connect with people more wholly and from a place of integrity moving on to saturn and scorpio so when you have saturn and scorpio what it can indicate is that there's certain karma relating to scorpionic subjects. That can be death, that can be sex, that can be debt or shared resources. Um, there's a sense of paying off or having to do work in order to um, overcome and come out of depths. Scorpio also has to do with shame, so we might feel ashamed and this kind of like limitation that's brought on by shame with Saturn and Scorpio. We might also feel a sort of rocky relationship in terms of intimacy and how we express and receive intimacy. Sex, death, and intimacy, we also might feel incompetent in those areas. So it's learning how to substantiate our knowledge and our wisdom along those topics. Scorpio is about depth of knowledge and it's about having a really deep understanding. So the more that we substantiate our knowledge in these areas, whether it be through metaphysical subjects um, that we study so we can more keenly understand death. Um, we might study Tantra or there's a really great book called The Multi-Orgasmic Man by Mantak Chia, um, learning about sex. Or uh, I believe there is also um, The Multi-Orgasmic Woman that's written by uh, Mantak Chia's wife. I, her name is escaping me right now. I've read multi-orgasmic man, not yet um, multi-orgasmic woman, but I'm sure that would be, I'm sure it's a wonderful read. But as we substantiate and practice and experientially gain wisdom in these topics and connect with these, you know, areas that Scorpio represents, we begin to feel more substantiated. And as a result, we can rise through that shame 
accept it, make peace with it. Like Leo, uh, Scorpio has to do with pride and shame. So the more we can hold space for our pride and shame, the more that we can take care of these emotions rather than having them drive the bus, the more authority we have over our emotional nature and our intimate nature as well with Scorpio, the more we feel substantiated and we do that work to emotionally elevate and thus um, we become the authors of our life and we don't become burdened or controlled by Scorpio is really big about control too, Saturn and Scorpio especially. We don't be we don't become limited by certain emotions or intimacy or death or sex. We become in harmony with them and thus um, we become the masters of our fate. All right, moving on to Saturn in Sagittarius. So when you have Saturn in Sag, it indicates that there's karma in relation to expansion and philosophical expansion specifically. Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter, and it's a planet that represents meaning in our chart, as well as our sense of expansion. Saturn, on the other hand, has to do more so with material matters, and it has to do with constriction. It's about uh, kind of paring away to focus on one thing. When we have Saturn transits, it's like telling us to focus on something specifically, and when we don't focus on that one thing, the other things in our life start to pair off. So it forces us to focus more so. So with this placement, there's going to be conflict around expansion of the mind and philosophical expansion. There can often be religious kind of undertones with this placement. It's like we're told to keep a small mind for spiritual or religious reasons. It could be we grow up with a father that is very staunchly religious in some way or has a very specific spiritual outlook. As a result, we can sometimes conflate this fatherly figure with God or with our idea of what God is. And through that, we learn to <sighs> let go of the idea of God being imposing and punishing and limiting. We substantiate our idea of what God is through study, through opening our mind and this gradual peeling back um, and opening up. It's like, flower that blooms over eons is what I see in terms of the opening of our philosophy. Uh, we do a lot of hard work to open our mind and it can be painful at times. It's a very religious experience though it's almost like we we become so much richer and stronger and more grounded because we trust God and we are God with more certainty and more experiential wisdom because we've gone through experiences where God was separate from us, and we've seen the karmic wounding that results at, from that perspective. With this placement, you're also going to be learning how to substantiate meaning in your life and where to find meaning. So, as I said, Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter, and Jupiter represents meaning. So if we're not creating philosophy and meaning that is enduring, that is integrated and has integrity, it'll fall apart over time. That being said, that's just more wisdom and more lessons for us as we develop the meaning and our philosophical systems that give birth to endurance and substantiality. And so that's part of our mission when we have Saturn and Sag, that's part of our karma, to create meaning that lasts. And that can be done in part through travel. Sagittarius is really big on travel, so the more new places we go, the more new cultures that we experience, our meaning will be tested, our own philosophical framework will be challenged, and it becomes stronger uh, and more substantial as a result of that. So yeah, you might travel for work as well, um, and that's really cool. Get out there, travel, be challenged. You might have been told to you know, stay within one specific realm of mind, but again, your father is like having that seed of philosophical possibility that was kind of um, not nourished or limited. So you're taking up that mantle and making it uh, a whole oak tree of meaning. Moving on to Saturn in Capricorn. So Saturn is considered in its domicile in Capricorn. It feels very comfortable and at home there. The energy flows in a way that makes sense to both Saturn and Capricorn because Saturn rules Capricorn. 
With Saturn and Capricorn, you are going to be finding substantiality through your life path and what you contribute to society, how you build society. How do you make society more substantial and yourself more substantial through that process? It can also be a vice versa thing. How do you make yourself how do you make yourself more substantial and society more substantial through that process of self-substantiation? There's also a lot of importance around living with integrity. Capricorn is the sign of the initiate esoterically. So it's like you are not only have you started climbing the mountain, but you're getting into those steeper spaces where less people are going. So you have to be very integrated and be solid in your sense of connection with divinity, with your soul's higher purpose in order to survive in those mountains and to be substantial enough to stand the tests of your soul and your personality. Are you slinking into that kind of, um, how you say, ego level, like thinking you're on top of other people, um, wanting to transverse the mountain because you want to be better than other people? Or are you going to the top of the mountain to reach your soul's destiny, to reach the glory of God, and then coming back down the mountain to share it with others? That is part of the karma of Capricorn. And Saturn and Capricorn, there's a lot of tough lessons that are going to be soul testing your integrity as a person and making sure that you are solid enough to hold the authority that Saturn and Capricorn designates you. Um, if you abuse that authority, it'll be taken away from you. Anything that we abuse, any power we abuse uh, or use to harm other people, it is taken away. So when we come from a place of integrity where we're setting boundaries and reflecting harm that um, distracts us from our highest good, that way, we don't need to take on other harm, but we also don't need to intentionally put harm towards um, people. Likely your father will have archetypical Saturnian qualities, Capricornian qualities of being someone that wanted to live in integrity, wanted to live in this sense of solidity and substantiality. However, this could have been limited in them. They could have been or it could have been present in them and they could be a really good authority figure to look up to. Um, it could have been either like a limitation, though like they they wanted to manifest this, but there was something that held them back, perhaps beliefs that you can't get ahead unless you're like kicking out other people from under you. Um, but it also could be supportive. That being said, um, you're, you're gonna be wanting to live in integrity and pick up that mantle of integrity so that you climb the mountain and become substantial and authoritative without having to hurt other people under you or step on other people under you in order to get there. Yeah, you, you're climbing the mountain through your own strength and the grace of your soul rather than through taking advantage of the people uh, that you meet along the way. And again, you substantiate yourself through your contributions to society, to the world. Uh, when you feel useful to the world, when you feel like you're building society and creating society, that's when you substantiate yourself. So building that substantiality in yourself is through how you serve the world and how you bring them up the mountain as well. Moving on to Saturn in Aquarius. So when you have your Saturn in Aquarius, Saturn is in its domicile in Aquarius, just like it's in its domicile in, in Capricorn. So it feels at home there. It feels a sense of flow and like, okay, this is familiar. With Saturn in Aquarius, there might be a sense that you feel a lack through kind of social um, rejection or feeling like socially disconnected from other people. You might feel like the groups that you're a part of, you don't have this um, substantial connection with the groups that you're with. You might also feel like you are limited by social mores of the day or just the way society sees things and accepts things in the era that you live in. Aquarius has a dual rulership. So it's ruled by Saturn, who is the great sustainer, the one that keeps things the same. It's also ruled by Uranus, and Uranus is the revolutionary. It is the great disruptor. So it brings things to the surface and truths to the surface that the world isn't necessarily ready for, 
And through that, it kind of stirs the pot or breaks up systems that need to change or that have flaws. Those flaws and those truths come to the surface so that change can happen. With Saturn and Aquarius, you're finding balance between these energies because you want to create change that's sustainable and create new societies and ways of society that are sustainable. And you want these changes to last. It's the idea of creating the revolution and having the goals and the tenets that the revolution is based on be sustained in the new society that's created. Also with Saturn in Aquarius, it's working with groups of like-minded people to substantiate new life and substantiate new ways of being culturally and collectively. You may have had a dad who also had an idealistic vision of what the world can be. However, they didn't quite have the integrity to manifest it or for whatever reason they couldn't at the time. And so you take up that mantle and you take up the helm in order to bring that idealized vision of what society can be into reality. Again, Saturn is about manifestation. It's about making things real. So it's really grounding that Uranian idealism present in Aquarius and making it a Saturnian reality. All right, last but not least, we're going to be talking about Saturn in Pisces. Lay all your love on me. So with Saturn in Pisces, there's this feeling that there isn't enough fantasy and enough dream in the world. Reality and dreams have such a stark difference that it can produce a lot of like depressive qualities with those with Saturn and Pisces. So there's a need to balance fantasy and reality and meld them and create relationship between them. Boundaries are also a really major focus because Pisces has such a fluid energy um, and Saturn rules boundaries, it rules limitations. Learning the stricture and structure of boundaries and placing them where necessary, while also having that openness for the unconditional love that Pisces represents, it's really important. There's that paradoxical nature between loving someone unconditionally, but also having boundaries so that they're not present um, in your life in certain ways and you don't relate to them in certain ways so that you're not drained energetically. Saturn and Pisces people have a really keen understanding and awareness of the lack of substantiality in human beings on this earth in this plane. The realization that we one day will all perish from this material plane. That being said, they bring substantiality through connection with what is eternal and connecting with the soul rather than the personality and the ego, um, melding the personality and the ego with the soul so that the soul can have just authority um, and be a good master to the personality and the ego. It's that yin-yang duality that fuses and becomes something of greater integrity and greater substantiality uh, through that fusion. Saturn and Pisces people create heaven on earth. They manifest heaven onto earth. Saturn and Pisces also indicates having a father who may have cut their dreams short or said that their idea to make their dreams a reality wasn't living in reality. So they kind of like put a damper on their wildest dreams. So Pisces, Saturn people are taking up the helm of those dreams and really manifesting those dreams into reality. With Saturn and Pisces, you have a creative ability and you also have the authority and that strength to bring that creative dream into reality. You create heaven on earth through manifesting your wildest dreams and Saturn and Pisces, it calls you to karmically do that. That's part of your karma is bringing your wildest dreams and manifesting them on the earth. All right, my gorgeous people, that will do it for today's video. I am so glad that you decided to join me today. Saturn is, I think, one of the most malign planets in astrology. And to really learn uh, through research and study how it represents challenge, it can absolutely, and work, though that's not a negative thing. We become so much more substantial and integrated as beings when we connect with our Saturnian energy. There's also a really great book by Melanie Reinhardt called Saturn and the Centaurs. 
I'll put the exact name in the description below. It's a really great book if you want to learn more about Saturn. Also, it talks about Chiron and the centaurs, which is really one of my favorite subjects. I'll link in the description below. Um, I appreciate you watching this video. If you haven't already, please feel free to like and subscribe. Also comment below if you have any questions, comment your Saturn placement and how you relate to what I talked about in terms of the placement. Um, also, if you guys have any like subjects that you want me to discuss on the channel, please feel free to comment that as well. I really love hearing what you guys have to say when you comment. Again, that will do it for today's video. I love you all so much and I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.